Well, last time at the Classic Stage Company, Jeff Goodman was in bed with Charles Bush. Tonight, I'm on the rocks with Cynthia Nixon, who's appearing here at CSC in The Illusion. Now, that's a fun play. It is. It's a lot of fun. There's a, we had a, a kids' matinee today, and uh, there's so much fun stuff in it. I mean, with sword fights and murder and betrayal and love. They, oh, uh, you know, violence and death. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, kids all love that. The, yeah, all the biggies, all the biggies. What kind of a reaction do you get uh, from children seeing this show? Um they're they're very I mean in some ways children are, are are the best audience they're what you want from an audience they kind of respond without censoring themselves so uh, there's a lot there are a lot of surprising things that happen in the play so when something surprising happens the kids will you know gasp or or if someone says something particularly cruel to someone else they'll kind of you know suck in their breath or you know. Now, we know that there's death and sword fights. Yes. What what else is there uh, about the illusion? Oh, there's everything. There's uh there's love, there's friendship, there's uh children pleading with parents and parents looking to try and regain their children's love and there's everything. That's nice. And this is an adaption by Tony Kirshner? Right. It's who did Angels? Who did Angels? It's it's from a play by Pierre Cornet from 1636. Right. And it's a father looking for a son. It's a, a father who's uh in his uh in his later years has uh he banished his son 15 years ago and and now that he's an older man and he's maybe coming to the end of his life, he's consumed with with guilt and with curiosity about what's happened to his son and what his son has made of his life, and so he comes to a magician to uh, he can't he can't find any information on him. He hires private detectives or the 17th century equivalent <laughs> of private detectives, and he can't get any information. But he hears that this magician has a way of uh, of um, Find, he's like an oracle, so he comes uh -huh. to him for news. And we're going to be actually showing a little footage from the show. Maybe you could tell us your part in it. Um, I play uh, a woman who has three different names uh, in the course of the evening. Uh -huh. But uh, basically, she's uh, she's very wealthy, and uh, I fall in love with uh, a character played by Rob Campbell, who's a kind of an upstart of a different class. He's a servant, uh -huh. but he's very bold and brave and brash and I fall madly in love with him. Oh, that sounds nice. Well, no? it's nice at times, but uh, these things don't always work out, you know. Uh, I see. Does, and the father, fa is this is the, the aforementioned son? This is the aforementioned son of the father who's come looking for him. Right. Now, you've had a very interesting uh, career in that you appeared in two Broadway shows at the same time. Yes, I did. How did you do that? Well, um, they were, they both had the luck to be directed by the same director, Mike Nichols. So I did one of them, and then I left that first show, the first show being the real thing, to go do the second one, which was Hurley Burley. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hurley Burley is a rather long play, it's about three hours. So uh, I was able to do the first act of Hurley Burley and then go over to the real thing where I would do the second act and then the curtain call and then I would return to Hurley Burley to do the last act and the curtain call there. Basically, so you you appeared, I think, in the first and last uh, acts of, of Hurley Burley. Right. So while other actors were reading, you just decided to go and right. do, do another Broadway hey, show? Moonlight. Do a little moonlighting. Right. I was told they named an equity clause after you. After they, that. Right. There, once, once that happened, equity decided that it should not happen <laughs> again. So there is a rule on the books preventing it. So if there is ever a revival of the real thing in Hurley Burley at the same time, we're only going to see Cynthia in, in <laughs> one of them. Now, the CSC has an, actually an, an interesting program for children. Mm -hmm. That's a pay what you can. Uh, I don't know too much about the logistics of it. We, uh, when we were speaking to them today, we were um, in because within our play, the magician, uh, the father who comes to the magician to be shown what is in effect a play of his son, uh, has to pay a certain amount of money, and the kids wanted to know why the father had to pay the money, and we explained, well, when you come to the theater, well, not that you all paid anything, and they all said, <laughs> oh, yes, we did, we paid two dollars, we paid two dollars. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's pretty good. Uh yeah, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. less than uh, renting than renting a video. Absolutely, absolutely. And you get to see live actors. <laughs> <gasps> what when you've just come from two contemporary plays on Broadway? Mm -hmm. 
Um, what was it like to go into a classic now, a very old play, even though it was written by a contemporary writer? Right. Well, I mean, there there are certain things that you definitely there are certain demands that a a more classical play makes on with you uh, on you, largely in terms of of the language. The language is a real consideration, and oh, the way you carry yourself, the way you speak. There there are, there are definitely conventions, but. Um, M mostly, I think, the play has so many, uh, the way we think of love, I which we think of being very modern, the, the play has all that, a lo lot of which comes from Tony, but, but Corneille also, the ambiguity of it and love fading. These are sort of uh, uh, things that have happened for centuries, I think. So really everything old is new again? Uh, I guess so. I guess so, yes. yes. Well, actually, I think even, even Shakespeare supposedly had sources for his plays. Yes. Yes. So I, I guess uh, Tony and everyone else is There's nothing new under borrowing the sun. <laughs> that is in good company. You're silly and you're poor, Calisto. I'm too busy for your games. You make me nervous. Please go away. I'll climb the walls. I'll call the gardener. And let his blood water the roses. Let me in or I'll stab my eyes out. Leave or I'll have you arrested. I don't know you. You're excessive and strange. He isn't even Callisto anymore. He is like 